Alright, so it's about a week into release of Glorious Battle, and the event has been met with, I'd say, mostly negative reception, maybe somewhat mixed, but mostly negative. I think mistakes have been made from players, we know now what we can and can't do. So I think we have a, just generally a bit of a better grasp in the event, so I'm going to do another video, just going over what we now know. So first of all, the most obvious thing is the NPCs. The NPCs are way overtuned and need to be made weaker next time. The event isn't really playable, to be honest, unless you have someone in your faction with the uh, reinforcement dragon skill. It, the NPCs are practically unbeatable without this, and you need someone who can just has either high enough stats or can send full tier 4 bowmen probably, because they bypass the counter system, to basically solo the entire location by themselves. Like, even me, I'm a pretty decently strong account, like now I'm, I think, 7k combat rate, like approaching 700% total attack. I have the skill at 9, and I, I can't beat out level 3 NPCs, they're, they're too strong for me. Uh, I'm, I'm like a zero castle, so I don't have the bows, and my stats just aren't good enough to justify it, and I'm one of the best banners in like a top 20 power alliance in the entire game. I'm 18th right now, obviously power isn't everything, but the fact that it's impossible for me to even kill the NPCs, given that being the situation, that is ridiculous. That is not how this event should work whatsoever. When we were clearing the NPCs earlier, I was just suiciding against them repeatedly and tanking like 500k hospitalized tier 4 healing bills over and over and over just so we could progress through the map because there was nothing else you can actually do like if because I was killing something like 60 to 70 NPCs before getting knocked out and anyone else was just getting immediately kicked so it was either I took the healing bills repeatedly or everyone else suicided so I had to take it all upon myself and one other person and a faction who's actually figured out how to kill level 3 NPCs without an issue at all. You can kill them to like 800 in a row, which is fine for us, but for the people that don't have someone that can do that in their faction, it is an absolute nightmare. And I think it isn't in the spirit of the event, it isn't what they were going for. Because it's, it's a tactical event, right? You're meant to be here to make tactical decisions and outplay the other factions, not just be restricted in what you can actually do because you don't have someone that can kill NPCs which that you can't politic with or do anything interesting with whatsoever. You also don't get anything for it. Like when I was suiciding all my troops against them, you don't get contribution points, you don't get elimination points, you don't get battle tokens, you don't get merit. You do get bravery tokens to be fair, but that is not enough for the price you have to pay. So I think 100% next time this event comes around, the NPCs have to be toned down dramatically. And I mean dramatically. I feel like they should just be total walkovers, to be honest. I think the focus should be on PvP. They should probably decrease the casualty rate a little bit more in PvP and just encourage more of it and keep the focus on that and the tactical side of that rather than making NPCs a relevant part of the, the map whatsoever. In terms of what like locations you should go for. I think my faction we put too much emphasis on trading efficiency. Trading seems a little bit pointless to be honest. It feels a bit redundant in terms of being useful. So the main things trading does, well, obviously it, it creates uh, armament supplies and then you transport them to locations and you need those supplies at locations to do certain things. So basically there are two things you can do about one, start these construction quests. These only need 5 million at a location to be able to start them. And these are important to keep up, they're an important way of like smaller players or just people in general when there's not fighting going on, just keeping their points taking over with contribution points and glory points, because you get points for these in every uh, military position too, so you can stay in offensive and just keep your points ticking up towards the talent trees without having to trade basically, which is pretty useful. But 5 million is quite low, 
and if you're populated, your supply will vastly, vastly exceed your demand for them, basically. The other thing you can do with these is deploy from fortresses to reduce uh, the march time to locations, so your resilience drops less. The problem with this is the armament supply cost is just way, way too high. So I can't actually send my full march right now because we don't have war in this head or anything, but when I can send my full march, it's about like 730k. Uh, this would cost about 85 million armament supplies. And in our faction, we've put quite a lot of emphasis on trading just as a mistake, really. We shouldn't have done it. I don't think that's the most efficient thing to do whatsoever. We could only send a person from a fortress like that three times and we'd need so many marching bugles used on transporting too that I feel like deploying out fortresses is sort of just a non-factor because you can maybe do it once or twice on a few big banners but it's such a commitment and it's so much hassle and that basically just turns trading into like a free to play points generator for like contribution points and uh, glory points more than something that actually helps you on the map to be honest which is a bit disappointing because it limits the amount of usefulness smaller players can have so I feel like trading should probably be made better in, a, in somehow I feel like the armament supply cost of deploying from fortresses should probably be dramatically reduced that's one way of doing it at least or maybe just expand on the construction system a bit more, make things a bit more expensive, but add higher tiers to them where you can just keep upgrading and improve your buildings more and more and more. Because right now there is currently a hidden free max construction limit. So here you see if I do post quests, like this is what you want to be focusing primarily on with your construction quests, obviously. This is probably the main focus in terms of the meta of how to win this event is just maximizing Warhorn production. So you're going to want to take the militaries, the medium and large militaries, and just focus these construction quests on them. But you see here, if I click post quest, I'm an official, it will say reached the max limit, because we've already done it three times. So you can't do it any more than three. They could expand that in my opinion just to make trading a bit more useful, make it a bit more interactive there. But the way the event's currently set up, that is how it works. So like I said, the meta right now is very much Warhorn production orientated because merchants are useless, caravans are useless because trading just doesn't really do anything. Whereas Warhorns, they let you progress more and more throughout the map, obviously. And there's sort of a double-sided coin to this, obviously, because if you can monopolize every military on your side of the map, for example, so if we take all these uh, large ones on the neutral side in the middle, potentially even like push in towards people's bases and take their medium militaries, we're going to gain the production of them, but you also deny it to the other alliances too, or the other factions. So you gain the edge on progressing through the map yourself, but you stall the others. And with that advantage, you can use that swing in Warhorns to take, say, like a 30% total attack buff, maybe two of them and that will just let you further your advantage more and more because it will just be harder and harder for anyone to contest you when you get ahead on the map with those extra warhorns. I think right now with how things are set up most players are probably going to want to keep their contribution and glory points ticking up with construction quests like I said. In logistics you do have trading and transporting which is necessary to a point but it doesn't contribute that much really. Definitely not compared to the likes of the warhorn production quests. In terms of prioritizing on those construction quests, the Warhorn productions 100% first priority until that free max limit. Then after that, it gets a little bit more complicated. So these three, enlistment order, city defense regime, and training are the standard for pretty much every location. You have like the trading efficiency on the merchants and the trading uh, like shop increase. Market expansion, I think it's called, yeah. So instead of like 200 people being able to send trades there, it'll be like 210, for example. But in terms of what is best after the Warhorn production, you're going to have to focus on these three, I guess. Because they're the only real things which give advantage. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure 
we seem to have worked out the first and third quests only affect NPCs. Because you see here, increases city defense troops by one regiment. And if you hover these, it, it will just add an NPC if you do this. And then here, training increases city defense troops, total attack by 25%, or all totals by 25% basically. But it has that city defense troops tooltip, which is the same as here, whereas city defense, and then if you hover city defense, it says every 1,000 city defense provides defending troops of 1% total defense and 1% total health. So I'm pretty sure this one affects player reinforcements, whereas this one only affects the NPCs, and this one only adds NPCs, which if true would make this one the only one of real value, realistically. So you're probably going to want to max this out on your locations that are most likely to be hit, which are probably your militaries and your fortresses. So you're going to want to buff them up. That's probably what I will like drill in from the start of the event next time at least, when we can start from fresh and not make any mistakes. In terms of talents, I think for the general player, the resilience reduction ones will probably net you more value than the stats themselves. Just because like when you're marching to like say here at long reach if you're marching to this military it will be like a six seven minute march at base and your resilience will drop by like 80 doing that which will tank your stats so much just reducing that loss is probably the best thing you can do i personally probably need to swap over because i can somewhat tank at zero resilience because of how busted the dragon skill is uh, with how the combat system works in this event. But for the general player in offense, I would say do the resilience reduction ones. That's probably my advice. And defense is the same, it's the same talents. Logistics, it's the same on the first two, but then you choose between efficient trading, which increases single trading time. So basically instead of sending for eight hours, you'll send for like eight hours 30, for example. So if you're away from your computer for longer periods of time, this can be a bit better in that sense. Whereas this is increased trading efficiency, so increased trading efficiency is probably the best if you can stay active. If you can't stay active, then maybe this is best. But if you can't stay active, maybe trading isn't necessarily the best thing to do, because you can dump all your marches quicker with just construction quests, and you'll max out your points for the day a bit easier with that, probably. How else? Though? I think that the raffle, a lot of people have asked me about this, what is best to get. Is Darius worth it? I do think Darius to at least Grey is worth it. He is, I think, 19 combat rate at base, and then 5 star combat rate, so he'll have 69 combat rate at Grey 10, which is very, very solid, and you'll be able to use him in Elite Trials, Alliance Trials, stuff like that. So I would definitely say get him to grey for a start, but then it becomes a lot more debatable. Also with him, you have to remember his buffs there. They are economic buffs, they are not military buffs, which means they will apply passively, and you won't have to be in your formation to take effect of them. So the casualty rate swings as passive buffs will actually be quite useful long term if this event becomes a mainstay, which I'm pretty sure it will. But you're obviously giving up a lot because the other worlds are so good, right? So I think this dragon one is the l most overlooked by me as well, even. Just because it, it's a bit of a slow grind, it's a bit, I don't know, not as sexy as the other two. But like 5,000 dragon XP is crazy. 1,000 dragon XP is really good as well. And then all these blessing stones, these are so awkward to get. You can get maybe like 200 a day if you keep on top of it 100% through free to play means. So this can really fast forward your buffs. And these are effectively like troop appearances for your dragon, right? They're just passive bonuses. It applies to all your dragons, all the buffs you get from this system. So stuff like dragon crit chance and dragon, dragon crit damage will really add a lot to you in fights, and I don't think people probably truly appreciate how much of a difference that will actually make yet, myself included honestly. I think 
it'll be very noticeable when all the like max accounts buy out the packs that have been released for it and just max their buffs out because it'll just be a massive increase in damage. I think one that's really taken people's fancy is the troop appearance one and I do think if you're like a lower spending player you don't have all the A and S troop appearances maxed especially. After Darius to Grey this might well be the best option because troop appearances are such such high value. Just getting all the S and A's to, to max goes such a long way in terms of your account strength. I will always advise people to focus primarily in spending on troop appearances and commanders just because there aren't free to play alternatives for them. So if you're a lower spending player that would probably be my advice is Darius to Grey and then troop appearances. If you're a higher spending player it's a bit more difficult because if the A and S medals become useless to you this will becomes a lot lower value. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do myself. I haven't got Darius yet so I'm just not even going to think about it yet. I want him to grey, maybe green at least for the combat rate and then I'll think about it myself later. So honestly Glorious Bell, I mean it's been a rocky start right? We've only had one instance of fighting in like my entire map which was us against these guys to the north over, what was it over? I think this, this fortress and the feedback to that fight was a lot more positive than the NPC stuff. Obviously we won so maybe it wouldn't have been that way if we lost but the casualty rate seemed a lot lot lower than against NPCs. My healing bills are about 20% of the, the size of my healing bills against NPCs and I was just getting knocked out earlier before my whole march would die. And I think that was a pretty consistent trend throughout my alliance at least from, from what people were telling me. And I really think the focus needs to be put on the PvP elements of this. And reduce the casualty rate even more if that's necessary to make that the focus. But that is where this event will shine. It isn't this NPC unkillable sell the 400 fragment dragon skill nonsense. That should not be the focus, because they have something that could be really, really great here, honestly. If they make this PvP focused and make it all strategic, I think this could become my favourite event in the game, honestly. I would also like to see it become kingdom-based and not faction-based, just because it, it will be easier to strategize that way or would promote kingdom building. The way it is right now, it sort of eliminates the kingdom building thing again which I don't like. I think something needs to be there in the game to promote that and reward that. And it would also eliminate a lot of problems people have been having, like I know a lot of EU-focused alliances at the start of the event, they just had random people with the official accounts and the other kingdoms and their faction just use their warhorns and waste them because no one was online. And especially with the necessity of that reinforcement skill to kill NPCs, things can go very very wrong if you use your warhorns incorrectly or at the wrong times. So I do think kingdom versus kingdom would be better than faction versus faction. But we'll see what they do with it. I mean they know people aren't happy with it, right? I hope they know that the state of the NPCs cannot be something that continues. Like, f for me, on my alliance, we, we matched with these kingdoms if we didn't match with K253, we literally would not be able to play the event anymore because we wouldn't be able to kill level 3 NPCs. There is someone on that kingdom that can do it for us and he's communicative and he's been great, but without him we would be utterly screwed. And we're not a weak alliance, right? We're, we're a really strong alliance, but just the way this event works, it just isn't possible. That's the I have the dragon skill, I have it at level 9. And it's still not possible for me to, to breeze through those level 3 NPCs. Which is ridiculous, that should not be the case whatsoever. And I really really hope they, they fix that next time. But for now I think this is how, this is what we've got. We're going to have to see how the rest of the event plays out as everyone starts collapsing towards the middle in you know, their different groups. Pushing towards I guess it's the middle location, but probably the main points of contest will be over these large militaries for quite a long time now. 
and trying to keep control of them. So good luck with that in your groups, good luck within your alliance, don't do anything stupid and kill off your troops if you don't have someone that can breeze through the NPCs, it's just not worth it. It sucks but it's just how it is, we've got to wait for, it, for a fix there sadly. Just keep complaining on the official discord and, tr and try and put pressure on that fix, there's nothing else we can really do. But I think we're all of the same mind at least, which is positive. And yeah, hopefully moving forwards they they make this event as good as it as good as I think it can be.